So, Grandma. Yes. What brings you to New York today? I came to New York to see Eric and Rachel and Stephanie and Neil and the twins and Olivia. It was Olivia's third birthday and I'm here to celebrate. Sounds like fun. Yeah, we've had a great time. What, uh, what were we doing this morning? We were just having our lunch together. Yeah, we had a brunch this morning and amidst all the chaos, it was fantastic. <laughs> Clarky was absolutely adorable, as they all are. They're absolutely fantastic. Not just because they're mine. And Reese gave you a kiss. <laughs> Reese gives nobody kisses, but she gave you a really? kiss. Really? She yeah. gave me a kiss. She really related to me today. Well, she, was, she sort of looks like you. I was really delighted because the first time I met Reese, when she saw me, she threw up her hands and screamed <laughs> and would not look at me. So I was very thrilled today to get a hug and a kiss That's from nice. Reese. And has Olivia given you a hug and a kiss too? Not too much. <laughs> I can't really get too far with Olivia. I don't know why. Well, she's been very focused on her, her birthday preparations. Yes, absolutely. Well, yes, we wanted to make a video of you because there's so much about you that a lot of us just don't know. And we kind of just want to give you the chance to talk about yourself in a way that we'll be able to upload this to YouTube and just we'll always be able to, to watch it wherever we want. And uh, just good to have a nice little archive of you. Right. Well, let's start at, <clears throat> start at the beginning. I was born November 19th, 1914. That is a long, long time ago. And I was born in the Bronx on Ho Avenue on a kitchen table <laughs> in my mother's kitchen. Uh, in those days, people did not go to the hospital and it was the regular thing. So maybe that's why I'm so petrified of doctors. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that just wasn't a good experience for me. Well, there, there was no doctor there anyway. Or, or was there? Oh, oh so oh, the, yes. the doctor came. The okay. doctor came. He did come when I was being born. Okay. And uh, we lived there for a few years, and then we moved to 53 East 96th Street in Manhattan to a sort of a townhouse and also living in the city were my father's brother, Meyer, Uncle Meyer. His wife had died and he was living there with two children, Selma and Eddie. And Selma at that time had St. Vitus dance. What's that? She was in a wheelchair. This meant that her, she could not control her motions. Okay. She was, you know, she would, go like that. Mm -hmm. It was very sad. And um, they had a, a woman that took care of them, Anna, I remember. It was Anna. And we lived there, well, until I was about eight years old. And then we moved to New Rochelle. And we had a house on French Ridge in New Rochelle. I loved New Rochelle. Uh, we were one of the few Jewish people living on our particular block. Uh, so when Christmas time came, I was very upset that we couldn't have a Christmas tree. Right. We were not very religious, but we did have a uh, Hanukkah. Yeah, menorah, Hanukkah. We had a Han We we used to light the Hanukkah lights and get presents every day. Um, went to public school there, and there were a lot of black children in the school that I went to. Mm -hmm. It was called Lincoln School. Um, so it was my mother and father. My brother was three years older than me, my brother Norman, and my sister Sylvia was five years older. You didn't know my sister at all. Did you? No, I, I remember going to her Do house on the east side. On um, East 68th yeah, Street. Yeah, I mean, she moved to Arizona. With be near her daughter and when, granddaughter. When I was seven, eight, maybe. Yeah. I don't, I don't really remember, actually. Yeah. And we lived there. Uh, my father was in the textile business. What, what was his name, by the way? Dave. David. David Siegel. 
was my dad's name. Where where was he born? He was born in in New York in Philadelphia okay. actually. His parents came from Germany, and I never knew his parents because they died when mm -hmm. I was about four years old. Um, I adored my father. He he was a very positive person, and he was something like my brother Norman. Um, and he and my mother were really very much in love with each other. So I had a very happy childhood. There was never any discord in the family. And I always had my big brother Norman around. My sister and I were never very close. She was five years older than me and very different from my brother and I. So we we really didn't have too much in common. Um, what about your mom? My mom was wonderful. What, what was her name? Eva. Mother's name was Eva. What was her name? maiden name was Khan. Eva Khan, okay. And she had two sisters, Aunt Rose and Aunt Lily. I never really thought of it. They were both flower names. Oh, yeah. And my mother's name was Eva. I don't know why she didn't get a flower name. <laughs> was she the oldest or the youngest? Or mother middle? was the oldest. Okay. Mother was the eldest. Aunt Lily was a spinster until she was probably in her 50s. Mm -hmm. Aunt Lily was tall and thin and the most negative person <laughs> that you could be. Mm -hmm. You would take her out to dinner to a restaurant Nothing ever satisfied her. Mm -hmm. She just never liked anything. She eventually married a Frenchman, Joe Herman, who she met through my dad. It was not a very happy marriage, and she divorced him. And then she met Lou. He was a short little guy, and he was nice, and they went together for years and then finally got married. Aunt Rose was married to Ben Browner, and she had uh, Rhoda, was her daughter. We were first cousins and we were pretty close when we were children. Then my mother had, she had many brothers. She had mm -hmm. Uncle Herman, Uncle Mo, Uncle Nat. Herman, Mo, Nat. Is there a Bob? No. Herman, Moe, and Nat. Uncle Moe's son was Bob. Mm -hmm. Bob Kahn, who changed his name to Bob Kane. Mm -hmm. And he was the Batman. He was the one who originated the Batman comics. And he, uh, he really became very famous. Mm -hmm. And he was a hypochondriac. <laughs> he would not sleep without a light being on. Yeah. And he was quite a character. So this is your mother's brother's son, son was yes. Bob Kane, the creator of Batman. Right. Okay. Yeah. And um, Bob Kane always loved me and said if I wasn't his cousin, he would have married me. <laughs> Although I never would have married him. <laughs> and he used me as a model for his cat lady. For, for Catwoman. Catwoman. How yeah. did how did that how did he did did you actually sit and model for him for this or no, he, he just, just took pictures of you and drew out? Yeah. How yeah. did how did he tell you that he had created this bizarre character out of your likeness? He said he he loved the way I looked and he just that's what he did. He just <laughs> copied what you know, what he thought I looked like and that's what he, he made did. Made you into a cat. But you you don't like cats. I never like cats. <laughs> no. Does um, were, when when he first showed this to you, were you offended? Were you surprised? Was I it was, just weird? I was, I was I was pleased. I mean, it was quite an honor. Yeah. And he became so famous that the cat lady, cat woman, became famous. Yeah. So I thought it was fun that he did that. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So, go, so going back to, we, we had gotten on that tangent from you were talking about growing up with Sylvia Norman in New Rochelle, 
when you were about 10 or 8. Or sorry, you're talking about your, your first public school, Lincoln. Yes. And then you went and to... And then I went to Evander Childs High School. Which still exists. It still exists. Yeah. And um, I graduated high school and I never went to college. What, what year did you graduate high school? Do you remember? No. Well, I guess if you were born 1914, 14. it must have been... In the, in I was the I was late... nineteen when I graduated high okay. school. So, so twenty. It was nineteen thirty two or thirty three. Something like that. And that's right when. Well, wait a minute. I got married in thirty six. Okay, so you were twenty three when you got married. No, I was I was twenty one, so I was younger. Okay. When I graduated high school. Okay. And before I got married, I did volunteer work at. Um, Montef no, uh, famous hospital in New York. Uh, in Manhattan or in... In Manhattan. It New York uh, Hospital. Isn't that silly? I can't think of the name of that hospital. Do you remember what neighborhood it was in? Bellevue. Bellevue exists. Bellevue. Okay. I did volunteer work at Bellevue. I also, um, I thought I might go on the stage. Mm -hmm. And I was in a couple of plays. And that didn't amount to anything. And then I worked for my dad. My dad owned the Empire State. He lived, he worked in the, he had a, an office in the Empire State Building. Okay. And his name of his firm was the Empire State Yarns Corporation. Okay. And one of his biggest customers was DuPont. Mm -hmm. And during the war, they sold nylon. Gotcha. And at that point, my dad was very successful because nylon was very scarce. Yeah. And anyone that had it. So was he involved in manufacturing it? He was a converter. Or? Okay. He was a converter of yarn. Okay. That's what he did. So he had he had a warehouse or a facility Factory. somewhere else. Yeah, in well, New Jersey. In New Jersey. I remember he used to take me there. Do you remember where in New Jersey? No. Ah. No. That's okay. And... Um, my sister married a man from Iowa, and he came to New York, and my dad took him into his business. He never really liked me too much and thought that I was spoiled and I went out too much. And so I did not work there very long, because <laughs> anytime I'd get a telephone call, he was very annoyed with me, mm -hmm. and it wasn't good. What, what kinds of places were you going out in oh at, my goodness. at that point? Well, I was very uh, friendly with some boys from Columbia, so I used to go to football games from Columbia, and uh, Saul Greenspan was one of the boys I went out with. I met him through my dad. and. When I was 16, he took me dancing in New York at the, at the uh, Roosevelt Hotel. We used to dance mm -hmm. to Guy Lombardo. Okay. And uh, we used to go down to the village. And so I started going out a lot when I was 16. Mm -hmm. um, when, uh, so then if you were going out with people when you were 16, when, uh, what, what, what other places would you go to? What, was it a big deal to come into Manhattan at that point? Or, yes. or, did, or I guess, did your parents have a place in Manhattan also? We, we moved to Manhattan. Okay, so... We moved to Manhattan. So after you graduated from high school, you yes. moved to Manhattan. Right. Where, where were you living in Manhattan? We, first, we lived at 420 Riverside Drive. Okay. It's 114th Street. My friend lives at 417 Riverside Drive. Really? He lives across the street. And then we moved to 900 West End Avenue, 104th Street. Okay. We were on the 24th floor, I think. Wow. And um, I really had a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. I went out a lot. And I was somehow or other, I was always going out with two, two boys at one time. Mm -hmm. I never could make up my mind. <laughs> and before I got married, I was still going with two people. And I remember saying to my brother, what if I'm making a big mistake and I should have married Cy Mantell, who was the other one that I went out with. My brother said, don't worry about it, which was my brother's attitude all the time. <laughs> Just 
go ahead, don't worry. And so I got married. And so, so now we're at 1936, right. August of, of 1936. August of 1936. Uh, and wh where'd you get married? At the Hotel Astor in New York. And so backing up for a second, how did you meet your husband? How did I meet him? I was very friendly with a girl, Jean Koretsky. And one Sunday afternoon, she said, let's go to Wilma's house. And it was a friend of hers. So we, we were all on the west side. So Jean called her up and Wilma said, come on over. So we went over and she was dating Leonard, my husband, Mm -hmm. At that time, she this was is going out Wilma with Wilma or Jean? Wilma. Wilma, okay, so this is the person who's, whose house you were going to. Right. Okay. Uh, my husband had just graduated Cornell, and he had a Ford convertible. Mm -hmm. And so we met them. They were just going out, and he said, why don't you two come along with us? So Jean and I sat in the rumble seat, mm -hmm. and Leonard and Wilmer in the front. You, where is this, by the way? This is not in the city. Yes, on oh, West Bend Avenue. Oh, lived. okay. Yeah. So all the way while we were driving, Leonard was watching me in the mirror. Right. And then we, we all left, and we had just moved to West End Avenue. We didn't have a telephone number yet. Okay. Leonard had been trying to call me, couldn't find my number, so one night my doorbell rings and there he is. <laughs> he said, I couldn't find you and I want to go out with you. So I said, okay. <laughs> I went out with him. It didn't matter that, well, I guess, did you know Wilma very well or not really? Not really. Okay. And he was gorgeous and he was rich and handsome mm -hmm. and I was thrilled to go out with him. So we went together for two years, mm -hmm. and then we got engaged, and then we got married. Was that a long time to go out with somebody before you got married? Well, it is a pretty long time, yeah. But I mean, versus your friends at the time, did they tend to get married sooner after going out with somebody for a while, or...? Well, there was no general... There was no rule? Rule, no, no. It just happened that way. Would, uh... At this point, when you were living in the city, did you take the subway? Did you take yes. the subway alone? Did you travel on your own a lot? Or Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Yeah. When, um... Were you, the, were you the first of your friends to get married? In the middle? Later? I was one of the first. One of the first, okay. To get married, yeah. Uh, I, was, I was 20, going on 21 when I got married. Okay. Uh, and I... Both of us decided we didn't want to have a baby for five years. We just wanted to enjoy ourselves. Mm -hmm. But I got pregnant very quickly. And after we were married a year and a half, I had a baby. I had Freddie. Mm -hmm. So this is 1937 or 38? 38. 38, okay. 38. Um, this is after your, your honeymoon which was a banana boat trip through Central America. Yes. We went to Panama Canal, and we went to Co Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, I did not have a very happy marriage. My husband was very possessive and very demanding, and I was very immature. And whatever he said, I, that's what I did. I finally grew up many, many years later, but I regret that I was the way that I was. Do you think because you got married as young as you did, that, that was just a bit of a mistake? Yes, because I went right from my parents, where they always took care of me, right. to marriage, where he took me over. I never wrote a check. He never, he never let me do anything mm -hmm. financial. And Which is funny, because financially, you're the smartest person any of us know. <laughs> well, I, he got very sick, and then um, I got a position, well, through a friend of ours, as 
on the loan committee of the Savings and Loan Bank, and that's where I really got a lot of financial experience. This and was. This... I also went to the new school and took some courses. Gotcha. In finance. And. Uh, I've heard that at that. Well, what year is this, by the way? We're jumping around a bit. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what year it was. I really don't know the year. Well, so, so going back to, to after Freddie was born. Yeah. So I, I was active in were... the um, Five Towns Music and Art Foundation. I always played the piano, and I started going to sculpture so, so at that time. So after you had Freddie, you moved to the Five Towns? Yes. Okay. At Freddie, before Freddie. Before Freddie, okay. As soon as we got married, uh, Leonard had an uncle who owned a building in Woodmere. And he gave us a very good rental. Okay. And so we moved to Woodmere. And first we lived in um, uh, Woodmere. And then we moved to an apartment house in Lawrence. And then we bought a house on Johnson Place where we lived for 50 years. This is 77 Johnson Place. Yes. And you were the first people to occupy the home. It was a, it was yes. a new house. We had it made. Right. We had it built. And was that neighborhood, I mean, that was a fairly new town at that point, right? I mean, or, or was it fairly developed? I guess it, in, in my mind, where, where the people of my generation are always taught that, that Long Island really exploded after World War II. But this is before World War II. Yeah. And you were obviously buying a new home there, so, so this was a more developed yeah. town. Yeah. We paid at that time, I think it was... Thirty-two thousand mm -hmm. dollars for our house. So this is nineteen, nineteen when? Uh, Must have been. I'm terrible with years. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Was, well, wait a minute. If you if you had had Freddie and you were in. I had Freddie when we were living in an apartment house. Okay. In, in Lawrence. But Freddie was born in a hospital. He was born in the hospital. Okay. Definitely where I stayed in those days. You stayed for two weeks. Mm -hmm. They allowed you, after you gave birth, 10 days you were allowed to dangle your feet. <laughs> you weren't allowed to walk until 14, until two weeks. They just wouldn't let you get up? They wouldn't, no. They felt you had to stay very quiet. I think Rachel walked pretty soon after she gave birth. Today, one day, they allowed them in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, it was... Very different then. Well, so, so you you were living in Woodmere in this house by the time World War Two started. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's nineteen forty one, or late nineteen forty one. Well, I lived in that house until. Uh, two thousand. Two thousand four. Two. Uh, two thousand two. Okay. Two thousand two. How much, how much did you sell for in 2002? We sold it for $600,000. Okay. That was quite a <laughs> surprise. It was not a very extravagant house. It was a very simple house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cannot believe the price that we got. Well, obviously, it was you were there for a long time. 50 years. Where, where were you, do you remember where you were when you first heard about the attack in Pearl Harbor? We lived in Lawrence. Mm -hmm. We lived in Lawrence on Two Herrick Drive. And interestingly enough, we were the first one in my family to move to Long Island. Okay. And then my brother moved to Cedarhurst, which is right next door. Mm -hmm. And then my parents moved out to Lawrence. They moved to the same building that we lived in. Okay. Uh, which was. It was good for me, but it wasn't so good because my husband didn't get along with my parents. Mm -hmm. So it was not too pleasant for me. Yeah. Um, but when... So, so then all, all, all of this is the early 40s, so you were all living on Long Island by the early 40s. Yes. Yeah. But then do you, do you, remember, do you remember where you were when you first heard about the attack in Pearl Harbor? Or not really? I was in Lawrence. Okay. I was in Lawrence, yeah. But I remember my sister came over and we were all, you know, 
very excited, upset. Yeah. Terrible. Yes. But the rest of the war, I mean, well, your brother served in the war. When, when, when did served. when did he leave for duty? <sighs> and I was I'm not talking about a year, but you know, was it a was it a while in or from the start? See what happened with Norman. He had gotten married, and his daughter, his uh, wife, uh, Joy, she was lovely. She developed, she got pregnant, and she developed cancer, and both she and the baby died. And Norman was devastated at that time, and he went. He enlisted in the war. I can't. It was around the time of the World's Fair when the World's Fair was in Queens. Is that 39? Could be. So he, he, he served for the entire war? I mean, that because he was, he he was, was part of the D-Day invasion, so that's, oh yes, he was. That's, that's six years. He was. Wow. He, was. He, he received many medals for bravery in the war, Norman. Oh, and he was wounded as well, I remember. He wasn't wounded ever. I thought he got a purple heart. He got a gold heart. Oh, okay. For bravery. Oh, okay. No, he was not. He was very fortunate. Friends of his, when he was in that invasion, you know. Well, he, uh, he was in the Battle of the Bulge, right? Battle of the Bulge. Right. Right. And he said friends of his were standing right alongside of him, and he saw them just drop dead. They were shot. And he was very lucky. Did you work during the war? Obviously, your, your, your husband wasn't there, so. No. But did, did you work at all, or you sort of try to keep things as normal as possible? I was, uh, I did volunteer work. Uh, I was always in music and art. And I was the uh, vice president of this very large organization, which I enjoyed thoroughly. And, uh, but then towards the end of the war, you got pregnant again. Yes. Seven years after uh, Freddie was born, I had Stephanie, who has been the joy of my life ever since she was born. I mean, she is the most wonderful person, really, that I've ever, ever known. And... Do you remember giving birth to her? What, I certainly what, do. What was going on? I certainly do. And I remember being in the delivery room and the nurse said, you've got a beautiful baby girl. And I said, thank God. I guess you didn't know that it was a girl beforehand no. for all this. No, in those That's days, very different. the doctor used to say, it was a joke, he said, uh, I'll bet you $50 that I'm going to give, I'm going to tell you the right, <laughs> you know, the right uh, uh, sex of your baby. And... <laughs> He always somehow turned out right. <laughs> uh, but Steffi was and is always wonderful. So, and Steffi gave me two fantastic grandchildren, for which I'm utterly grateful, Eric and Rachel. And this is, so this is August 11, 1945 is when she was born. Right. Had the news of the atomic bomb reached you at that point, or, or not yet, I'm not sure. Because I think it was two days before. You may have been totally distracted at that point, yeah, giving birth, I, I so it didn't I even register. I don't remember about yeah. that. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, what else? Can I, my mother's mother, I was very close to her, mm -hmm. Grandma Fanny. I, I looked very much like my grandmother, and she lived with us for a while. After mom was born? No, no. Uh, before I was married. Oh, okay. She lived with us. Oh, okay, so she didn't live with you. Okay. No, no, no. And uh, she used to live with Aunt Rose, who lived in the Bronx in an apartment house. And my mother wanted her to come out and live with us for a while. And she came and then she said, I don't like it here. She said, I look out the window, I don't see anything. She was talking about Long Island, she just didn't yeah, see. Yeah, okay. it was too quiet for her. Because she was used to the city and all the noise. And I remember, she used to listen to the radio all the time. Uh, the Goldbergs was a very popular program. Mm -hmm. This woman used to, uh, 
you don't remember hearing anything about the Goldbergs. No, I've no, never. Of course not. Uh, she used to listen to it all the time. She spoke Yiddish and English, my mm -hmm. grandmother. And I remember two Jewish phrases. She used to say to me, Geh schlafen Kinderlach, which meant go to sleep, you know, child. Mm -hmm. And uh, she used to bake on the kitchen table sugar cookies. And she used to make fried flounder every night, every Friday night mm -hmm. for dinner. Uh, she was a sweet, wonderful lady. So was she from the U.S. or no? No, she was from Russia. Okay. And you're, both your parents, so your mom was My also mom from the U.S.? was born in New York, too. Okay. Yeah. My parents met on the Atlantic City boardwalk. Huh. My dad picked my mother up. She was going there with some friends of hers, and he was walking with some friends of his. And, you know, they started talking. And they were very young when they got married. They had no money, and they got married, but they were a very happy, wonderful couple. So. When, uh... So yes, moving on to, to the first couple of years of my mom's life, or actually one one more question, because I remember you once you, you once talked about this. Uh, one more question about the '40s, when you first heard news about you know rumors about concentration camps, what did you think? What did you, did you did you believe them? Did you not believe them when you first heard about these things? Well, I believed it, but. And we were very disappointed in President Roosevelt mm -hmm. because he he was really anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we we thought it was horrible, of course. Did you vote for Roosevelt? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, in Mom's first couple of years. Yeah. So you know, moving to the, to the forties and the fifties, what do you remember most of the first ten? 15 years about of it. Of my mother? Of your, uh, your mother? Right, of my mom after she was born. Yeah. She, she was adorable. She used to whistle in her crib when she was, I think she was nine months old, and I would hear whistling. <laughs> and I'd go in, and there she was standing up in the crib whistling. And she, <laughs> she would cry. In fact, that was another thing with me. My dad called me Miss Niagara Falls because <laughs> if he looked at me cross-eyed, I was in tears. <laughs> I used to cry an awful lot. And Rach, uh, Steffi did too. She, she would cry very easily. Uh, she was a real, real little tomboy. She liked playing with, you know, fake guns and she, she loved dogs and horses. Uh, she loved camp. She was a real camp lover. Well, she still talks about Camp Red Wing. Yeah, she still sings the songs. She there. sang it to you this morning. <laughs> uh, so by the time she got to college, what was what was the process of choosing colleges? And I guess same for Freddie. I mean, Freddie went to college for a little while. Just for one year, and he had a nervous breakdown. Oh, okay. Did you ever want to go to college? I did, but my dad at that time couldn't afford to send me to an out-of-town college. Okay. And I didn't want to go to a New York college, mm -hmm. so I didn't go to college. Why didn't you want to go to New York college? I wanted to go out of town. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I thought if I couldn't go out of town, I wasn't going to go. It's just not worth it. When uh, you once mentioned you used to visit your dad at work and then go to the Oyster Bar. Yes which we're going to go to tomorrow. That's right. Because it's still open. Yes. I absolutely adored it. We used to go and sit at the oyster bar, and he would have half and half oyster stew, mm -hmm. half cream, half milk. Mm -hmm. I didn't go for that so much. Right. But I loved the oysters, and my grandson, Eric, <laughs> adores oysters, and we have established a custom of trying to go there any time I come to This is you. fairly recent. I mean, we only went yes. there the last time you were here. Before that, you hadn't been there in... In years and years. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad that we are doing that. What, uh... What, what was your favorite kind of food when you were growing up? Well, we used to have 
really big meals. Mm -hmm. uh, we always would have either soup or a salad. And well, I remember when I was first married, I always had help, mm -hmm. and I used to figure out what we were going to have for dinner for a whole week. Monday night would be meatloaf, Tuesday night. We ate very little fish in those days. Mm -hmm. We ate a lot of meat, a lot of chicken. Because uh, fish wasn't as fresh or just wasn't what you... I don't know. We just didn't just... eat fish in those days. Yeah. And I did a lot of baking in those days. I used to... We always had a, either a layer cake for dessert or mm -hmm. something else. That was the way we ate. When... Uh, when... When mom and Freddie were not at home in college, did you miss them? I mean, was it, was it harder to just kind of live your life without them around? I was very lonesome. Yeah. Especially for mom, mm -hmm. really. Uh, and I had a terrible experience. I don't know if you know this. When mom was, I think, her second year in college, I got a telephone call from a man who told me that he had kidnapped her. Did you ever hear that? I may have, but go, go on. He had kidnapped her, and he said, I, I want you to know that I, know, I really have her. He said, she has beautiful legs. And he started describing what he was going to do to her. Mm -hmm. And I almost died. I really, I, I didn't know what to do. I immediately called my husband. I almost collapsed on the steps, I remember. And um, I called the school. I called the college. She went to Cedarcrest. She went to Cedarcrest. In Crest. Allentown, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And um, they immediately went to find her. And she was perfectly fine. She was in college. This was something that was going on in my area. There was a man that was doing this. And they finally caught him. But it was a horrendous experience. How, how long did it take to find her? Do you remember? I mean, it probably felt like a while, but do you remember yeah, how long it... Uh, it was about an hour. It was... Because you couldn't was... just call her cell phone. <laughs> Those days, there were no cell phones. Uh, let's talk about some, some trips you, you've been on, because you, you went to, you've been to Europe a couple times. Many times. Uh, when was the first time you went, do you remember? First time we went, we went on that first jet plane to France, and there were people cheering when the plane landed. It was, it was the first time that this particular jet had, had flown to Europe. Do you remember? when this was. So so this is a direct flight from New York to yeah. France. Yes. On Air France. Air France, okay. Yeah. What uh where where did you stay and did you just go to Paris or Well that trip we we just were in Paris. We were in Paris and in London. So this must be some time in the fifties. Yeah. So And we went to Europe almost every year. Oh wow, okay. We went we went many times to Italy, to, uh, we went to Spain, we went to Italy, we went to Venice. What would you do there the most? What did you like to do the most? You don't strike me as a beach person, you hate swimming. We didn't do that. We went sightseeing. Okay. I wanted to see the city and the food was fabulous and mm -hmm. I loved shopping there. Uh, and just seeing those cities was really wonderful. I guess it wasn't as expensive as it is now. No. It's probably pretty cheap to go there. Yeah. Relatively speaking. What about, uh, you also, well, did you go to South America again besides your honeymoon? No. Or no, that was it? No, that was it. And you never went to Asia? It's, it was too far. Never went to Asia. No. When you would travel... Would you come back? Didn't you come back by ship sometimes? Because yes. you had a lot of shopping that you were probably bringing home. Yes. Uh, which was which was more comfortable for you? The ship or the plane? Yeah. Well, I think we took the um, the Cunard line, the the Queen, to London. The Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Or, okay. Took the Queen Elizabeth to London, and. Uh, we went by ship one other time. Other times we always flew. Okay. 
So you've been flying for a while, and yet you you don't like flying as much now. I don't mind flying. Oh, you don't mind it? Okay. I don't mind flying. I don't mind. I, I hate all that you have to go through before. Okay. You know, all that stuff. Did that not exist? There was no security? You would, no, you would just walk up and nothing. board? Yeah. Very different. Yeah. Where, uh, did you go on road trips around the U.S.? No. Not so much? No. No. We used to, uh, in the summertime, very often, well, when, uh, Eric, Eric, when Freddie went to camp in the Adirondacks, we used to go up there. We used to go to, uh, Scroon Lake. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's what we did usually in the summer while they were in camp. What was the first car you had? Well, the first car Leonard had was a Ford. Okay. Uh, it was a Ford convertible. And then we had many different kinds of cars, usually Cadillacs in those days. Mm -hmm. Although you bought mom a Corvair, I remember. For college. Which turned out to be the most unsafe car. The most unsafe uh, car. Well, remember Ralph Nader had that book, Unsafe at Any Speed? And it was all about how the Corvair was a dangerous, really? terrible. Yeah, you didn't know that? No. <laughs> She had a yellow Corvair. It was a hugely unsafe car. I'm surprised my husband didn't look look into that. I mean, I think it came out after the car had been, had been sold for a while. What did, what did he do? What did your husband do? He worked for his dad in the real estate business. What uh, Did you ever take an interest in that or not really? Or was he... he I would have. He, he wouldn't, he wouldn't let, let you, me. yeah. He wouldn't let me. I used to go with him sometimes to the buildings. Uh, he, they had buildings in the Bronx, mm -hmm. and he used to go to uh, check up and see the super, see what was happening with the buildings. Have you been back to the neighborhood you grew up in since then, or now? I mean, when was the last time you were there? It's a very different neighborhood now. I'm very... Once I leave something, well, that's, I, that's I, true. <laughs> I do not go back. You practically threw out your photo albums when you moved to Florida. In fact, I think you tried to, or you wanted to just get rid of them. <laughs> I gave them to Steffi. I'm not much on the past. I believe in the present and the future. That's why we're making this, because otherwise we don't know anything about you. Uh, Is there anything else I could tell you? I'm trying to think. Well, Papa was religious, but you never were. He wasn't really, really... His grandfather, on his father's side, was a rabbi. Okay. And so he used those, those twillin? The tefillin. Tefillin. <laughs> the the tefillin. Well, he used that <laughs> the, the, every the morning. Okay. And if he missed it, he would do it twice. I okay. mean, he absolutely, but he was a reformed Jew. He wasn't really religious. Okay. But that's what he did. And, uh... We belong to a reformed temple, and he was active in it. Moving forward to when Rachel was born. Yes. Uh, when was the first time you saw Rachel? Well, they lived in Chicago when she was born. No. Boston. Rachel. Boston. Boston. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I remember Steffi called me up. I wasn't up there. And she said, you've got a red-headed granddaughter. And I was very excited. And then we came up to visit them. Were you happier when they moved down to New York? Yes. Well, and they lived in one of Papa's buildings, right? Yes. 260 West End Avenue. Right. But when I was born, you saw me pretty much that day. I was there. Right. When but you, 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 were, were, you were there? Yeah, I was oh, in okay. the hospital when you were born. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. and you were there when I had my ultrasound. My... my um, what is it called? In vitro. No, in vitro. No, no. I saw you in on mom's the screen. Yeah, the, the ultrasound. Yeah. But, but grandma came for the procedure. What procedure? It's just the sonogram. The, the, no, the, no. The, um, the, the um, amniocentesis. Amnio, that's yeah. the word. Okay, yeah. but you don't see anything from that. They just... Yeah, no, you yes, do. Yes, you do. They have to see where to put the needle. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I saw you inside <laughs> of mom. When, uh... 
when when Papa died, uh, what did you want to do with yourself after that? I mean, obviously you'd been together for so long, and as you said, it, it wasn't always the best, the easiest time. What, what was your reaction? What did you... Well, you know, he had been very sick for about 10 years. Okay. And he was in a wheelchair. Right, I remember that. And, uh, yes, remember the wheelchair? Yes. <laughs> uh, and I must say, I felt free mm -hmm. when he died, to be very honest with you. And You were 74. I was 74. 72 or 74. Yeah, and I went on to enjoy life. To redecorate life. the house. I redecorated the house. <laughs> it was one thing I did. Did you want to? Do you want to? Did you want to leave Long Island at that point? I mean, you had. Uh, I didn't. I really didn't think of leaving Long Island. Yeah. I really didn't. When did you decide to become a, a Floridian grandmother? Um. Well, after Dad died, I went down to visit my brother, who mm -hmm. lived in Sarasota. Okay. And uh, I liked Sarasota so much that I decided to rent for the for three months down there. Remember, I took you down. Yes. Uh, and I did. I rented there for ten years, and then bought my apartment, my present apartment. Gotcha. And. Going back a little bit, you know, when, when you think about the time between when mom left for college and eventually was living in Chicago and Freddie was not at home, I presume, at that point. He was home. Oh, he was home, okay. He was home until he was 30-something. Okay. But I guess if she's seven years younger, there, there, was, there was a period of time starting around, I guess, the 60s that... He, he left. That it was just kind of you. What, what, what do you remember most from that period of time in your life, from the 60s to the 80s? Does, any, does anything stand out, or, or it's just sort of like a, a blur of the same old? No, I, I really, I don't know. And were you ever politically active? or? Was no, never I wasn't at all interested. But I'm much more interested today right. than I was then. No, what, I was not interested. Why do you think that is, that you're more interested in, in politics now versus before? Well, I really don't know. I changed a lot in many ways. And uh, how how would you if if are you able to describe how you think how you, how you feel you've changed? I became much more mature person. And uh, because I was on my own really for the first time. And I, and I really liked it. Mm -hmm. Do you wish you could have had more, a, a bigger chunk of your life? Yes, yeah. I do. I do. Why didn't you ever want to get divorced if, if, it was, if you were unhappy? Because in those days, I didn't have any money of my own. I had two children. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I would do. Yeah. And so I just stayed. Do you have a lot of friends who you grew up with who it was the same kind of situation? No. No. Because I think now, you know, I've... In my generation, people will often get married for five years and then get divorced yes. after five years. And there, there's a, it's a more of a revolving door. Right. In those days, you just didn't do it. But you would date people, and that was more of a... Not a revolving door, but you would date multiple people at once, whereas now people don't... They don't multi-date like that. I think that's different. They don't multi-date? Well, I don't think so, no. Yeah. When, when I'm dating somebody, I'm dating just one person. Just one person. Whereas it sounds like you said you had two at, two at any, any particular time. Yeah. Do you, do you keep touch with people who you grew up with, or, or not much? It's, it's, I get the sense that you don't. No. You know, everywhere you go, you meet new people, and you kind of move on from there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about, let's talk about when you met Irwin. What, what? Uh, when you met Irwin. What about it? When, when did you meet him? I met him, well, he's going to be dead now in July, three years. And this is your most recent boyfriend. 
he was my Ralph's recent, and I would say he was the best. I adored him. He was a very interesting man. He was interested in everything, mm -hmm. and I loved being with him. How did you meet him, though? I met him through my friend Frida. Uh, this was two weeks after Sydney had died. Sydney was your previous boyfriend. Previous boyfriend. And we went to dinner with this lady, and as we're having dinner, she said to me, you know, I live in a retirement home, she said, and there's a man on my floor, and she said, you must meet him. So I said, why are you telling me that? I said, Frieder is your friend. <laughs> so one, I said, I'm not interested. I just came out of a relationship, and I'm really not interested in meeting anyone. Mm -hmm. She said, no, Frieda is too tall for him. She's too <laughs> big for him. She said, you're just the right size for him. And she said, everyone loves him where we are, and I want you to meet him. I said, I'm really not interested. If mm -hmm. you want to tell him to call me, let him call me, and I'll, I'll have lunch with him. So two days later, Irwin calls, mm -hmm. and he says, how about having lunch with me? He said, I've heard all about you, and he said, I'd like to meet you. So I met him, and when I first met him, I was not that impressed, because he was a terrible dresser. Yeah. And uh, he took me out for lunch. We went to Patrick's, and... This is in Sarasota. Yeah, All this Sarasota. is in Sarasota, okay. yeah. And when I left him, I didn't think I was going to see him again. But he called me, and I thought, oh, what the heck, I'll go out with him again. And each time I went out with him, I liked him more. And I really had a wonderful relationship with him. Did he you, made me happier than any other person. Did, uh, do you think part of that is just because you knew what you were looking for? You were older and you, you knew the kind of person you wanted to be with? Well, he just turned out to be the type of person. I mean, you know, other men, they didn't have so many interests. They were boring. They were really boring. Mm -hmm. But with Erwin, I was never bored. And he was very good with people, mm -hmm. which I liked. And Didn't you two go on a, you went on a, on a trip or two somewhere. Didn't with you, him? Didn't you go on a cruise or am I making no, that up? No, that was Sydney. Okay. That was Sydney. No, Erwin, unfortunately, had this heart condition. Right. He wasn't able to really travel. If, uh, you know, years, years from now, Olivia, Reese, Clark will watch this, what would you want them to hear? What, what, what do you think they should know that they would otherwise not know? From someone who's lived as long as you? I would say, Get as much as you can out of life, especially when you're young. Because not everyone is as fortunate as I have been with my health and my ability to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And go after what you want and do it. That's my advice, really. Let's see what else. What is, do you have any particular favorite memories? Of, of anything. Anything? Yeah, open-ended. When you run through things in your head, to the extent that you do, because you never think about the past, <laughs> what, what... Well, this is... Uh, I was on a trip. Um, we went to Mallorca. I was with my husband, where I usually did enjoy wherever I went with him. Mm -hmm. But this particular place, we were at a hotel that had once been a palace. And it overlooked gardens that were so magnificent that when I looked out the bedroom window, I said to myself, I want to imprint this on my brain mm -hmm. so that any time I want to bring it up, I can. And I can. Mm -hmm. And I do. And I can look out that window and see it just exactly like it was. It was an exquisite 
Nice. Well, I think that's that's all I can think of right now. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else worth putting it worth putting on here. We're at 50, 54 minutes, fifty four oh minutes, fifty five minutes. Oh boy! Really? Yeah. I can't believe it. Did it go by go by fast? Yeah. I'm trying to think if there are other details that that I may be missing just because I don't know your whole life. There are other things that, that could be interesting. I would tape you playing the piano, but the piano is so horrendously out of tune. Oh, that's terrible. But you do play the piano every day. I do. And you drive? I do. Not at night as often. No. Not at that's night. only recent, though. Mm -hmm. That's only recent, though. That yeah. And you are known amongst my friends to be the coolest grandma of them all. Because you are active and you are Catwoman. Well, I guess that's it. I guess that's we can it. we can always come back for more later. But we'll thank leave, you, we'll Eric. This. Thank you. Okay. We've turned it back on just because you were you were going you were talking more about about growing up and about your dad. My dad always called me schnucksums. And in my family, when any of us went out, we always kissed each other goodbye. Mm -hmm. And when we came in, we always kissed each other hello. That Which, seems very formal, but it doesn't sound like it was a formal thing. It wasn't formal. We, we, just, we just did that. We were very affectionate. Well, we had a very warm relationship, which is wonderful, really. Does, uh... My mother was the type of person that found good in everybody. I don't care if people, you know, had some really bad things about them. Mm -hmm. She said, well, they must have something good. She, she liked everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't take after her that way. Although I wouldn't, you're, I, don't, I wouldn't say that you're a supremely judgmental person. No, but... Um, I, if I don't like a person, I know that they have things that I don't like. And, yeah. You know. Well, actually, come to think of it, the battery is about to die in this. Maybe I'll, I'll end it there. Okay. She used to live on uh, East 68th Street. Did you know that? Uh, between 1st and 2nd Avenue. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mom? Yeah. Dishes are close. When, uh, how old, how old, how old did your mom live to? 94. Wow. You've already blown her record out of the water. Well, did you know how old her parents were when they died? Yeah, my grandmother was 78. Okay. My dad was only 63 when he died. What did he die of? He got a, uh, what do they call those things? They used to do it in those, a colon, a colon Colonoscopy? Cleaning. Yeah. Colon oh, cleaning. oh, an enema. Not an enema, but it was a, a high speed thing that they used to do in those days. Okay, yeah. And it, it perforated his intestines. Oh. And he had to have a colostomy. Yeah. Uh, then he had an operation to take it away, and then he had a heart attack. Wow. And I think, you know, if he hadn't had that, he probably wouldn't have died. When, when was age. this? How, how old were you? Oh, God. You know that when he died, I was so upset for a year that I thought that I was getting a heart attack all the time. Uh, I was... I'm terrible on dates. When did Dad die? I was in my 30s. I was in my 30s. I was heartbroken when he died. Well, let me see. Uh, Stephanie was born. Stephanie was about four years old, I think. So 1949, 1950? Something like that. Okay. And he died at home, and before he died, he was in bed, and I went in to see him, and he said, I've had a wonderful life, 
And he said, I hate to go, but I'm very happy with what I've had. He was, he was wonderful. My grandmother came over from Russia when she was 16 and she met this man, I think his name was Ruben Kahn. He had children her age and he married her. So this is? My mother's mother. Your mother's mother, okay. And all her children, my mother, they all said, she never called him anything but Mr. Kahn. And they said she never got undressed in front of him. She always would get undressed in the closet. Was she older, or was he older, or? He was much older than her, yeah. But he had children with he her. He had children her age. No, he, but had, he had children oh, with he her. he had five children with her. Okay. But she so would she never get undressed. she undressed at some point. <laughs> Maybe she didn't, <laughs> you know. <laughs> what, um, does your mother's father, your mother's mother, uh, what about your father's parents? I don't know anything about them because mm -hmm. I was four when, when my father's father died and his mother, my father's mother had died before, the his father had remarried mm -hmm. because his wife had died. So I never knew the real wife, the real mother of my father. Do you know if they had other family in Philadelphia or did, were they all here? You mean my father's siblings? Yeah. I, I really don't know. I don't know. I guess we've never thought to look at seagulls in Philadelphia. No. That's where he was born. I don't, I don't know how long he lived there. They li I think they lived in New York. Oh, okay. Any other, I'm trying to think of there any other funny random things, Mom, you can think of that... Well, I don't know what you covered. Yeah, well, we covered throw, anything. throw things out there. Did you talk about Sylvia? Yeah, uh, well, well. About her brain tumor? No. No, we didn't talk about that. She had epilepsy. Mm hmm And she was always sick as a child. She had thyroid. And my father, she used to get migraine headaches all the time. And my father always used to tell me I had to go and sit with her which I resented mm -hmm. a lot. Well, and also talk about how he shielded you. He didn't want you to, he never wanted to talk about anything unpleasant. Yeah, he never would talk about anything unpleasant, my dad. And at the dinner table, when he was having very bad financial problems, we never knew. I mean, we had to sell our house in New Rochelle because he couldn't afford to keep it anymore. And, uh, but we never knew it. Is that when you moved from New Rochelle back we, to the city? Well, first we moved to the Bronx, to an apartment house in the Bronx. Okay. And then we moved. That's when you. Then he, he, you know, he did something in business that was good, and then we moved to Manhattan. I guess he never met Nat because he wasn't alive. Correct. They were, I was five. They were both when he in, died. Yeah. I remember him. Who? Dave. My father. A little bit. He was crazy about you. He used to take mom for a walk and introduce her to everybody. 